Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. This is our exclusive video weather blog called Weather Overtime. It is a quiet Saturday night. We may be seeing some more problems heading our way as we go into early next week. Doesn't look like too much of anything to worry about again for the rest of the weekend, so definitely some good news on that. But if you are traveling, got some updates for you for tonight. We may see some problems into, again, the rest of the evening for tonight into part of areas just outside of the News Channel 3 viewing area. We could see some fog out there. It could be a bit of a problem, so we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little while. We are live on Periscope and Twitter, and as of right now, again, things looking pretty quiet, uh, again, for much of the Mid-South area. So if you'd like to check in with us, let us know where you're coming in from, uh, drop your location and your weather reports, if you have them, into the comments section. Also saying hello to all of our friends on Facebook for tonight who are just joining us. So we're live on Facebook, Periscope, and Twitter for this evening. We are just live on our News Channel 3 Facebook page just a little while ago. So things, again, decently quiet for the time being. Bryock one one from in and around the area, maybe. Not too sure. Thanks for joining us on Periscope for tonight and everybody who's joining us uh, in and around the area on Facebook. If you're on Periscope and Twitter, check out the lower left-hand corner of your screen and you should be able to see uh, my iPad showing a picture of the News Channel 3 studios. So a good opportunity to see a little bit more about what's going on there. Uh, Amy Cat 79 welcome to the show from West Memphis, Arkansas, from just across the river. Thanks for joining us. And Kevin Dunn, on Facebook. Thank you very much for joining us there as well. And uh, Barris, R, Barris NR61, thanks a lot for joining us as well on Periscope and Twitter. Let's go ahead and get going and show you more about what's going on in and around the Mid-South for tonight as we go into the overnight hours. Should be again a few clouds in and around the area and temperatures not dropping that much farther, only back into around the mid to upper 40s and that's going to be it by the time we're on the air with News Channel 3 Daybreak into tomorrow morning. Rest of the day, again, kind of a mixture of clouds and sunshine shine out across much of the area. So again, we could see some uh, areas a little bit cooler thanks to that early in the morning, but by the rest of the afternoon, could be looking again at temperatures a little bit warmer. Matter of fact, even pushing about 70 degrees or so. Stace, uh, snow on the plateau as we go into around the uh, rest of the week. Not too sure about that. Let me get back to you on that from around uh, the Cookville area, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll talk more about that in just a little while. Very much on the mild side as we get into tomorrow. Temperatures Again, well above normal, back into the upper 60s, it's around about the lower 70s or so, and around about sunset dinner time tomorrow. We could be looking again at some fairly warm conditions out there, but we're still not seeing anything in the chance of rainfall as we go through Sunday. So if you have outdoor plans for tomorrow, that looks okay. We'll talk more about the detailed forecast here in just a little bit. Right now, traffic across the Mid-South, no problems being seen. Poplar. Park and the Quince Avenue overpass back there behind my head, showing again traffic light and moving along pretty nicely at this time. Occasional slowdowns in video notwithstanding. Good visibility for right now in East Memphis. Likewise, into the area around Germantown, from the area just north of Germantown High School. Towers of East Memphis, 53 degrees. Pretty dry right now, 59% humidity uh, being seen for this evening. So again, a little bit on the cooler side in some parts of the area. <coughs> Excuse me need some more coffee. Looking into areas around I-40 and Winton Road back towards Sycamore View. See traffic on both directions on the flyover moving along pretty nicely and traffic decently heavy for a Saturday night but no slowdowns being reported at this time. And from downtown Memphis, our cotton exchange camera looking good as Big River Crossing is lit up and animated for tonight in celebration of the great season that the University of Memphis Tigers had. Unfortunately, it came to an end today down in around Florida. Uh, Glenn Carver and Mike Sadie will both, our dynamic duo of the sports teams here, will have updates on that coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. So stay tuned for more on that. Scout in Mom on uh, Periscope, thank you very much for joining us for this evening. If you've got questions about the forecast, let's see them. Drop them into the comments section. If you have any questions about what's going on here in and around the Mid-South, we'll do our best to focus on those. But anything outside the area we'll get to as uh, much as we possibly can. So stay, stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on that coming up in just a little bit. As of right now, again, decently dry and quiet. Storm Tracker 3S radar is not showing anything 
in the way of precipitation. We've still got very dry air across much of the Mid-South. A few scattered showers over portions of New England, southeastern Canada at this time, and just off the East Coast and down into around Florida. Gulf Coast picking up a little bit of moisture. Some of that moisture is coming in from off an atmospheric river. It's a directed flow of moisture right over Baja and into northern Mexico. A lot of clouds coming through here and some more rainfall starting to develop not the system we're expecting. We have a larger atmospheric river from around Hawaii all the way back to the West Coast states, and that has again been giving some showers and some snow showers up into portions of the northwestern United States. So if you're traveling anywhere between, say, Seattle to San Francisco, you may see some slowdowns out there on travel. Not doing too bad out that direction, so good news uh, at this time. Mark Lewis Levine, hope I'm saying that right if my bifocals aren't lying to me. Uh, welcome to the show on Facebook. Now, if you take a look even farther, we've got, again, a giant wave of energy about ready to cross the country, and that's going to be heading right back our direction to in the course of the next couple of days. So we will be seeing, again, the next storm system on its way. Not quite here yet, but it is getting organized, and once it crosses the country, it's going to be heading more for the Mid-South as we get into around Monday and Tuesday. We'll talk about that in just a little bit as well. Now, as of right now, Gloria Davis, Holly Springs, Mississippi. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us on Facebook. Just outside the viewing area, east of Oxford and just just to the south of Corinth, so Tupelo, Columbus, Tuscaloosa. Dense fog could be a possibility into tomorrow morning. So please keep that in mind if you're traveling. Again, this is just outside the News Channel 3 counties. So why are we telling you about this? Because we are the station that is on your side, and we want to make certain you are aware of what's going on with travel out there. Fog forecast into tomorrow morning. Much of the area should not see a problem in the Mid-South, but take a look at what's going on down and around Tupelo. About a tenth of a mile expected around about the time we're on the air with News Channel 3 Daybreak into tomorrow. So if you are traveling, that could be something to watch out for, so please keep it tuned to News Channel 3. I'll have an update coming up on Daybreak and a look at the fog tomorrow morning as well. Temperatures live, real-time, updated weather information. You can get these on your computer by going to wrag.com slash weather. Mid to upper 40s to lower 50s, some of the warmest numbers out across the Mid-South are back into the upper 50s to lower 60s, so a decently mild evening across the Mid-South, dry and no problem seen again with anything going on uh, with any major storms just yet, but as we go into next week, again, that could be something we're going to be needing to take a look at. All right, let's run the numbers and show you what's going on into tomorrow early afternoon. Some temperatures with those southeasterly winds coming up will be keeping the temperatures up into the mid to upper 60s to around about the lower 70s with clouds kind of coming and going. They'll be there and then they won't. And they'll come back again. That's the way it'll operate through the day tomorrow. Now getting into very early Monday morning, there will be chances of rainfall. I'm not enthusiastic about these at this point in time because, and I'll show you why coming up here in just a little bit, chances of rain will be best as we go past dinner time on Monday and right on into early Tuesday. Now, winds coming up. Notice those moving lines on screen going up out of the north and coming up from out of the south. Uh, Sturm, Sturm Uber Bringer, welcome to the show on Periscope. Thanks for joining us for this evening. Right now, the best possibility of rain is going to be around dinner time and afterwards on Monday evening, and that's where we're seeing, again, the potential for some problems coming on through the area. Ricky Kitty, uh, fog tomorrow at this point in time. Uh, don't think it's going to be that heavy, and again, it's mainly going to be for northeast Arkansas, northeast Mississippi. We'll keep our eyes on that for you, so stay tuned there. Now, watch what goes on. Again, these lines here, the moving line showing the winds out of the south. Watch what happens as we go toward midnight on Tuesday morning and just afterwards. It's going to be a very sharp difference in what we see with the winds right about daybreak Tuesday morning. Winds ahead of this front out of the south, winds behind this front coming in from out of the north. And this is going to be a very big, sharp difference out of this. So within the course of a couple of hours of this thing moving on through, winds ahead of this will be in the lower 60s. Behind this, we could make the lower 60s according to this computer model run, but I think it's going to be a little cooler thanks to the rainfall. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to walk out of the house for school or for work uh, on Tuesday morning early. It's not going to feel that bad. Yes, there's going to be rainfall. You're going to need the umbrella, but it's not going to be all that bad. It's going to be decently mild. But as we get in through the rest of the day, 
that's where we see everything kind of change by a little bit. And notice the temperatures right behind this front, mid to upper 40s to lower 50s, ahead of this front, mid 60s. So we'll start off the day pretty mild. And as this front clears the area by about, say, lunchtime, temperatures will be dropping. We'll be in the 70s low 70s on Monday, and then after that we will continue to see some temperatures dropping into around the mid to upper 40s around lunchtime for much of the Mid-South. Temperatures by the time you head home from work on Tuesday evening, by the time the kids get on the school bus, could be in the mid 40s in some parts of the area. So we're going to see that gentle, steady drop throughout the entire afternoon. It'll be a little bit colder starting off in the morning, but it'll be a lot cooler by the time you get home. So take the jacket or the umbrella with you just to be on the safe side. Now, looking at dew point, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, the air between me and the camera and all over you and everything we breathe in, all these molecules of, of air have moisture embedded in them. They're all over the place in between those molecules of air. The amount of humidity out there depends on how much of that atmosphere, the air, contains all that moisture. When it's really hot and humid, when it's, again, really on the humid side, we'll see the green pick up. Right now, we're looking at some very dry conditions into the next couple of days, right on in through about Monday morning. Now, as we go into Tuesday, notice again the colors shift, and we start to see the rainfall potential rise late Monday evening, but any chances of showers early during the day, I don't think we're going to have to worry about too much. Maybe a raindrop or two, but so far it looks like it's going to be very dry out there until the warm, moist air comes in. We're not going to see that much in the way of showers from what it looks like uh, into the area. Karen Corden Pounds, welcome to the show. Thanks for stopping on by. What does it look like for severe weather? Uh, Deb Princess 45, welcome to the show on uh, Periscope. Thank you very much for joining us for this evening. For severe weather purposes for tomorrow, not seeing anything, again, too dry, not getting too much of anything else going on for that. But as we go into Monday, especially Monday night into Tuesday, the Storm Prediction Center is showing the potential in this green area of just generic thunderstorms. Now, it doesn't look like much at this time. Could be some small hail, could be some gusty winds, maybe some downpours, stuff like that. But so far, it does not look to be a severe weather threat. Now, this map could change uh, in the next 24 hours, so we definitely want to watch and see what's going on here. For right now, much of what we're seeing is going to be this large swath of possibility of thunderstorms. It's going to start off here during the early part of the day and then move our direction toward around the evening hours. So from, say, Minneapolis down to the Metroplex, we could see a lot of showers and thunderstorms here late Monday morning into early afternoon and then moving into the Mid-South as we go into Tuesday evening. But so far... We're not seeing anything here. There's no forecast for severe weather. This is just generic potential for thunderstorms, and that is going to be so far about it. But again, that could change as we get into the next couple of days, so definitely want to keep an eye on that. Keep it tuned right here, and again, we'll keep you updated on this, and if there's any severe weather coming our way, we will definitely let you know about that. All right, running the numbers into the next couple of days, lower 70s for Sunday. Chances of showers and thunderstorms begin on Monday with, again, that very warm air mass staying in place. And then temperatures, again, hit the lower 50s. Computers are saying 60s. I'm going a little lower than that because the air is going to be cooled off with that rainfall. But we'll start off in the mid-50s, lower 50s early on Tuesday, and then drop throughout the rest of the day. Clearing dry air comes on through. So by the time we get into around Wednesday morning, temperatures will be chilly, but we have no chance of any snow out there because the dry air is going to chase all that moisture out of here, and we're not going to be seeing much of anything else going on. So dry, chilly throughout the rest of next week. Low temperatures in the upper 20s to the lower 30s. So for those of you who have been looking for the potential of a little bit more in the way of chilly weather out there, we're going to see that dry. Not much of any rainfall expected as we go into the next 7 to 10 days. So chances of rainfall will be limited to about Tuesday evening, maybe into very early Wednesday morning, but that's going to be about it. And then after that, very much on the dry side and pretty chilly temperatures below normal for a good portion of the time frame out there. And as of right now, reinforcing shot of cool air looks like by the time we hit next Monday and Tuesday. This again will change over the next several days. Forecasting is again the art of seeing what's going on, but the computer models are updated as the information comes in from those uh, computer recording stations, those airport and uh, weather recording stations around the world. So all these numbers that you see on here 
again, will change. That's the main thing to take a look at. And the main thing is to keep updated with this forecast as much as possible. So by next Tuesday, this is not going to be the expected temperature. This is just giving you a general long shot idea as to what may be going on. So keeping that in mind is something to take a look at uh, for right now. Foley, Alabama, Phyllis Baker Lewis, thank you very much uh, for dropping on by for tonight. If I'm not mistaken, that's way on down toward the coast uh, area. I was down there with my family around Orange Beach uh, a few years ago. Enjoyed that area of the country. Very nice down that direction. Thanks to everybody for sending in their pictures. Not sure if she's referring to Louis Haskett, the very frequent contributor to our weather pictures, or if the cat's name is Louie when she says morning Louie, but thanks a lot to Alicia Joe G for a picture of the cat in front of the fireplace. <laughs> Definitely a great opportunity to see that. This is really cool. If you haven't seen this before, right there, that rainbow color is facing away from the sun, which is down here out of the picture. A nice capture from C57 Sandy on Twitter of what she calls an upside down rainbow. That's not quite the case. This is made by ice crystals and this is a pretty rare capture. You don't often see something like this. If you saw it in the other direction it'd be part of an arc or what's called a halo or a glory. It's an atmospheric optic effect. In this case it's facing the other direction away from the sun. It's called a circumzenithal arc. If you've never seen one of these before you really got to be looking for them. They have to be under the exact right conditions to see this but the light shines again on the opposite side you can see the red down here and the blue up here showing the light shining this direction so if you'd like to see more about this or see this picture check out my facebook page for more and a cloudy start to friday morning thank you very much to mr louis haskett uh, back in the northeastern arkansas if you've got pictures out there we would love to see them again i'm making this as much of a plea as i possibly can out here but we can't show the pictures if you don't send them in and we only get a trickle of pictures a lot of the time so if you've got weather pictures out there we'd love to see them but please send them along to us and let us know what you are seeing out there. And the way to do that, tweet me at aonic underscore WREG3 on Instagram, aonic no underscore necessary WREG3, and on Facebook at AustinOnic WREG. Again, would love to have you along for the ride when it comes to pictures across the Mid-South, so please let us know what you'd like to see out there. And we pass them along on netcasts like this and also on News Channel 3, Daybreak, 10 o'clock, whenever we can feature them, we have the opportunity to do so. If you can't catch our forecast online or watch us on air, dial us up on the radio, Country 92.5 or Oldies 102.3 on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations. And, of course, we'll have more coming up on your forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on News Channel 3 at 10. Kristen Holloway has an update on the newscast. Mike Sadie and Glenn Carver both have an update on sports tonight. Busy day with the Tigers season, unfortunately, coming to an end in our Around Florida, and we'll have more on that coming up here in just a little bit. Amy Cat 79 on Periscope, thank you. Yes, coffee that will be served in abundance tomorrow morning. Uh, Nina Harrelson and myself will be quaffing quite a lot of that uh, into tomorrow. And join us, please, for News Channel 3 Daybreak Sunday, starting off at 6 a.m. We'll get you updated on the fog and the update on severe weather and all of that as well. Thanks to everybody for joining us on Weather Overtime. And don't forget, we've got more information coming up on your forecast and all the day's news coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Thanks for joining us for tonight's episode of Weather Overtime.